In this video, I will show you how to program your own honeypot in Python so that you can slow down a hacker and analyze his actions on your system in a controlled environment. For this, we use the Python library Paramico. But before that, let's take a quick look at what is meant by a honeypot in the first place. A honeypot is a security measure used to deceive, identify and monitor potential attackers. Just as bees are attracted to honey, a honeypot is used to lure attackers and monitor their activities in a controlled environment. This can be done, for example, by simulating a well-known service such as SSH, which, like the original, listens on port 22 by default, but in reality does not allow any combination of usernames or passwords. And this is exactly what we program ourselves using Python. Therefore, we will use the Python library Paramico. Paramico has been designed to use SSH in Python applications. It allows developers to create and manage SSH connections, which is especially useful when you need to access remote servers or devices. Paramico can be used to create SSH connections, to execute commands, to transfer files, and to perform many other tasks related to SSH communication. To install it, open the CMD or the terminal and issue the command pip install paramico. After the successful installation, we now start with the implementation of the honeypot in Python. We start with the shebang in line 1 and then import the three libraries socket, paramico and threading. After that, we create our own SSH server class, which inherits from the server interface of the paramico module. That's why we write paramico.serverInterface in round brackets directly after the class name. Inside this class, we override the two functions check auth password and check auth public key. Check auth password is responsible for the authentication with username and password. No matter what the user enters, it will always return the message that the login attempt failed using the value paramico auth underscore failed. But before that, we display what the attacker tried to enter, that is, the username and the password he used. The check auth public key function checks whether the attacker tries to log in with a public key. If this is the case, paramico.auth underscore failed is used to directly inform that the authentication failed. With this construct, an attacker is never able to log in, no matter what credentials he uses, because we always return paramico.auth underscore failed. This slows the attacker down and allows us to see what credentials he is using, whether a particular user is to be attacked, etc. Now we define a function called handle underscore connection that gets a client socket and a server key. Inside this function, we define a paramico.transport object that will be used for SSH communication between the server, that is the honeypot, and the client, that is the potential attacker. The passed server key is added to the transport. The server key is used to ensure the authenticity of the server to the client. This step is necessary so that the client has the server's public key to enable encryption and authentication. Afterwards, an SSH server with our custom SSH server class is created and started immediately afterwards. Now we program the main function. Within this function, we first define a socket object. This object is used to listen for incoming network connections. It is configured for the TCP protocol and the IPv4 address family. In the next line, we use the socket option so underscore reuse address, which allows us to reuse the same port even if previous connections are still active. After that, we bind to port 22 and allow up to 100 connection requests in the queue. If you want to know why we use the IP address 0.0.0.0 here, check out my video on this topic, which you can find in the video description down below. Now we create a server key and accept incoming connection requests in an endless loop. As soon as the connection request is received, we display it. Then we prepare the connection in a separate thread using the handle underscore connection function and start the thread. In the main program, we simply call the main function. 
before we test the program, we move the real SSH service to another port. Open the configuration file sshd underscore config under slash etsy slash ssh as sudo. Navigate to the entry where port 22 is currently located, uncomment it by removing the hashtag and change the port number to, for example, 2222. Press Ctrl plus S to save the changes and Ctrl plus X to exit the program. Restart the SSH service with the command sudo systemctl restart ssh. Perfect. Before we start the honeypot on this machine, let's take a look at the IP address. Open the terminal and enter the command ifconfig. Here you see the IP address of our machine, that is 10.0.2.15. We start the honeypot using the command python honeypot. Py. I've started a second machine in parallel. This is the attacker in our scenario. We now try to connect to the target machine 10.0.2.15 via SSH in the classic way. You want to try to log in as administrator. For this we enter ssh admin at 10.0.2.15. After that, we will be asked if we trust the server, which we affirm with yes. Then we are greeted with the classic SSH prompt and are asked for a password. Of course, we don't know the password and try to brute force it. My first test is ABC123. Okay, that didn't work. What about Geheim, the German word for secret? Too bad, this is also not working. And Andromeda 2010? No success either. Okay, let's take another try. I enter three other passwords in the background, but none of them seem to work. When we switch back to the honeypot machine, we see exactly what the attacker just tried. He's apparently surfing with the IP address 10.0.2.22 and has first entered ABC, then Geheim, and finally Andromeda 2010 to log in as administrator. The attacker now tries Kali at 10.0.2.15 and starts entering passwords again. Now we see that instead of the user admin, the user Kali was tried to be hacked with the same passwords. This indicates a password spraying attack, which we will take a closer look in another video. Congratulations! In this video you have learned how to implement and test a honeypot in Python. Your task now would be to extend the program to store the credentials entered by the attacker in a log file on the computer. If you have any further questions, feel free to post them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.